Welcome and good day, everyone. Uh, we are doing a little different version of our Talk It Over this week, um, but still should be excellent conversation and, uh, of course, a great way for us to dive deeper into this week's message. Uh, but before we get to that, um, Carolyn, welcome back. Thank you. Um, how has your week been? It's been a good week. Yeah, it's been a good week. A lot of uh, flus affecting a lot of different people. Um, so it's been a bit of a slower week as a lot of kids are off sick. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, no, it's been a good week. How about for you? Yeah, I've been uh, pretty good. Um, Emmett had his uh, ear tubes put in this week. Um, so far, been very successful. The, the procedure was quite quick, which was good. And he's, of course, hearing a lot better. So uh, that's a uh, answer to prayer, of course, for us. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a big one, which was really good. So yeah, that was nice to get that one out of the way and be able to get that done as yeah, sickness, uh, allergies, things of all kind of seem to have crept up, which is kind of where we're at right now. Um, just uh, being on the safe side, make sure we're not spreading, spreading things that we don't need to. So um, just a, a little bit different of a way this week, but still a good time. Uh, one other thing for me, actually, I found my uh, silicone uh, wedding ring. I actually found it this week. Wow, that's been missing for so long. It's been missing for quite a while, and so that's that's it right there. So we, we found it. So it was uh, underneath the bed, up against the baseboard. I looked all under the bed. I never saw it and happened to check once more and sure enough it popped up and it was there so so that was a that was a, a happy moment um certainly yeah. not my uh i would say my actual wedding ring i haven't lost that one but um it was nice to nice to find this one especially with uh, you know being outside and camping and stuff it's a lot nicer to have that one than the than the, than the i would say the, the better one of the two um and yeah. lose that one so so that was a bit of a uh, a high moment this week which was nice so yeah that is a nice feeling isn't it when you're like what happened to it where it could have gone yeah 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 it's it's good so yeah so really happy about that um so i don't know what it is for you guys uh this week um maybe you guys have had a high um something great's been going on maybe kids being in school um getting back into that routine's been really great or maybe it's on the other hand of that maybe maybe it's been some hard stuff uh, moving into uh, maybe dealing with, of course, today's message, maybe some trauma, something that's uh, maybe come up that's causing a bit of hurt, uh, a bit of pain. Um, but whatever that might be, we, of course, would love to hear from you guys. Um, so if you want to leave a comment in the chat, uh, let us know what that might be. And maybe we can even pray for you um, because I know the power of prayer for me, especially this week and uh, seeing it didn't go really well and uh, knowing that god had his hand in that was uh, a big part of it so this week's message of course we were uh, still in our series peace of mind which has been an excellent series so far um certainly diving into a lot of those mental health uh you know issues and things and the stigmas around some of that um and so for me i found it very good very helpful um quite uh opened my mind to some of the things and areas that maybe I haven't been uh, thinking about too much and maybe need to do a little bit more thinking about. Um, so this one is three ways to seek healing from trauma. And uh, of course, Craig Rochelle, he brought uh, a great energy, I guess, to this message this week and uh, quite enjoyed it. Um, so uh, our scripture for this week uh, is found in Romans 8.28. Um, and we know that all in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I think that speaks pretty deeply to knowing that when uh, God's at work and he's always in work, uh, at work in us, um, he can, of course, bring us through many things. Um, maybe, you know, not uh, carry us over top of the hard stuff. But is there, uh, you know, helping us and guiding us through those difficult moments? And uh, yeah, I quite, quite, quite like that. Um, so, Carol, 
Um, oh, actually, before we get into question, I should do a little bit of a recap here. Uh, so Greg kind of was, again, talking about three of these points. Um, and uh, before he dove into that, we kind of got what trauma looks like a little bit. Um, so trauma is a response to a deeply disturbing or distressing event. Um, it can be anything from uh, mental stresses, things around you, um, can be a physical uh, distressing event. Um, but uh, yeah, there's lots of different things that those can be. Um, and the wounds you can't, you can't see can hurt as much as the ones you can see. Um, and certainly holding on to those things, uh, especially from the past that maybe we thought weren't a big deal, certainly can be and can be quite uh, painful as they come up and arise uh, later on in life, um, especially if we haven't uh, had time to deal with them or uh, process them. Um, he talked about three types of trauma. We have an acute a response uh, from a one-time traumatic event, a chronic, uh, a long-term response uh, to uh, a repeat event, so something that's a continuing hurt, or a complex one, a, a response to multiple and ongoing events, things that are constantly happening all the time. Um, so those three kind of ways uh, to seek healing. Um, his first was we process the pain of our trauma. We prayerfully press uh, into God with our trauma. And lastly, we pursue purpose in our trauma. And uh, yeah, I think those were an excellent way to dive in to these questions, of course. Um, so our first question for you, Carolyn, on a scale of one to 10, how are you doing right now? Hmm. Um, I think if I'm right now, I'm probably a five. Um, I think this was an amazing message and I realized that, um, there are some things that I have to, um, kind of process. And I think mm -hmm. I could really relate to Craig just talking about, um, one thing after another, after another, after another. And sometimes there are seasons like that. And this has been definitely a season for me where you feel like you're coming up for air and just another wave comes over and just, um, yeah. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Um, coming through COVID, but just having added things on that and changes and, and major changes going on. Um, yeah, I, I just, I'm probably 50, 50 right now, but I okay. definitely have been encouraged by this message. So it, mm. it's a really good one to mm. give perspective. It is, it is. It's a, it's an excellent way to really look at what, um, things are going on. Um, in your life, kind of what's around you, what have you come through, or maybe you're just getting into. Um, certainly a great way to have that kind of a perspective and look uh, for sure at this message. Um, for me, I think we're sitting somewhere about a seven. Um, certainly still processing some things um, and uh, moving through some of it, um, but uh, never, never at that 10. Um, I think to be at that 10 is to really assume that you're never going to run into anything traumatic or bad again, which, uh, of course, you know, we know that that's not true. There's always going to be uh, some kind of an event, some kind of something that comes along um, because we know, uh, you know, persevering through that hard stuff really builds us and builds our faith with God. Um, and so if it was completely easy, that the building that faith it would be a very different look um, than it would be um, so yeah i think just looking through some of the big things that have uh, you know happened over the years um, for me and realizing that i'm you know dealing moving through some of it uh, processing it and moving it um, so certainly now has been better season a couple of years ago we would have been a much lower on that scale um, but uh, yeah, right now, certainly, yeah, getting, pushing through and finding finding some, some healing in those areas and then pursuing a bit more of a reason. Now, why why did this happen? What can I get from it and take forward? Um, so, yeah, that's been, been really, really good. Um, 
Okay, our next one. So, uh, what part of the message for you, Carolyn, was most impactful? I really, really appreciated um, his different points to kind of how we respond. Mm -hmm. um, and the one in particular was instead of seeking connection, we prioritize protection. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, it just really hit home that I've been really battling through that um, and really talked about, right, this whole idea of trust and yes. um, recognizing that when I'm hurt, I, I do retreat. Um, that snapping yeah. turtle, I'll bring back my snapping turtle. Um, yeah. That whole idea of retreating in, and I didn't know yeah. Craig was gonna be talking about this, and a couple of weeks ago I was talking about that snapping turtle yeah. um, perspective I have, and I just realized that I really do go, um, wanna kinda hide and retreat, and God's saying, no, you're, you're choosing protection over connection and that's not going to get you what you need and um to just recognize that and i just so appreciate his honesty and clarity in that and so just choosing i have to make some different choices that when you're hurt and you've experienced trauma we think by protecting ourselves is the way to go and it's not it's yeah, through yeah. connecting so yeah yeah that's i think that's very true for a lot of us that we tend to just protect put the walls up and just be very contained to ourselves yeah. um, and not really looking to reach out in any way um, to try to seek healing or anything like that um, and yeah it certainly can be a very almost like depressing area i guess where you're just kind of so alone by yourself at least for me that's how i feel when i get that kind of protection mindset um I, I just feel really it's kind of it changes my whole attitude and mood um so and yeah, energy yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah energy for, yes for sure yeah energy as well for sure what about for you what was the uh, point that was <sighs> from sunday's message there for me there wasn't like massive stick outs uh, on this message um i thought it flowed really well together um, but the one thing that, that stood out just a little bit more was looking at, at Paul and all the traumatic stuff he faced um, and, and seeing all the cities and things that he went to and, you know, was, was like stoned and left for dead and like things that are like just crazy. And yet he continues on and he almost finds joy in knowing that he's continuing on it, it's it just stood out it's like wow this guy went through like some really crazy things and some of the stuff that i think is like hard is like that's not near hard to his heart and how faithful and and um you know following god he was in that time and it just it kind of shifted my mind like man I, I really need to rethink some of maybe how i'm thinking about stuff or what i'm uh, thinking is you know this really horrible thing but it's really not as bad so i guess more of a perspective shift for me in uh, in you know traumatic things and yet him still finding that uh, that happiness in it it uh, mm -hmm. certainly certainly stood out for sure for me uh, quite a bit um i don't know what it is for you guys uh what would that message uh, that impactful part of the message be for you um, if you haven't had a chance to watch the message, I certainly encourage you guys to do that. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel, LifeNorth.Church. Everything is there. Please subscribe. You'll be notified, of course, when everything gets posted. It'll pop up and say, hey, something new. Uh, and you can come check all that out. So I certainly encourage you guys to watch this message um, and uh, let us know what was that impactful part for you. Now, we touched on this a little bit earlier, um, kind of those three ways of uh, you know, moving through trauma. Um, so we can start healing from trauma by, of course, processing the pain with trusted people, prayerfully pressing into God, and pursuing purpose in our pain. So which one of those for you, Carolyn, um, stands out the most? Um, for me, it's the um, prayerfully press into God with our trauma. Um, I think in this season where it's been waves upon waves, I think, um,
talking to God and getting um, into God's word consistently has definitely been more challenging for me. Um, and I think it's that isolation piece again for me, right? I'm, I'm choosing protection versus connection, not only with people, but also with God. And mm -hmm. I think it's a great reminder that um, talking to God and to reading his word is really, really important to bring a perspective and a connection yep. that's going to help me face the hardships. And I think for me, it's just that great reminder that that's where I need to be. I need to be talking to him and other people and seeking out community opposed to mm -hmm. isolation. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. Yeah, pressing into God because we can press as hard as we want into him. And he's always going to have that grace, always going to have that, that, you know, that love for us yeah. and us coming to him and trusting him in those moments. Um, I think can really build up that relationship with him, um, just uh, making it stronger, that better connection. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really like that. Um, and that's a great way to you know, work on that trauma for sure. Yeah. What about for you? Oh, I think some of it, it's over the past season. Um, this last year, things have been slightly difficult with relationships, uh, for sure for me, um, and trying to find, uh, processing that pain, um, the loss of relationships, um, and processing what does that look like and looking at myself as, am I the problem? Am I the one causing this? Is this all, all on me? And, and so trying to figure out, trying to process that pain. And so taking a day and just really looking through some of that stuff and just letting it go, getting rid of it and letting it go um, has certainly helped me. Uh, but it's taken me almost a year to really process what that looks like for uh, those relationships, those friendships that I had that I thought were friendships and turned out uh, not to be and actually turned out to be quite um, toxic and and me not recognizing that but then me taking all the blame as it's you know it's on me that I'm the one that's caused the problem um, so having that year to process that actually is the time that I needed um, and so through that though I'm trying to pursue the purpose of that hurt um, and so taking that time to kind of close that chapter and look at what that looks like for me moving forward um, has been really good. Um, actually trying to open up and not close myself off and keep myself closed off. Um, I want to keep myself open to um, experiencing uh, new uh, friendships with people, building on friendships, um, things that have started. And so I'm trying to look at that and, and you know what, saw through that, that, hey, I'm only half of the equation to the friendship. I'm only half of the, you know, half of the relationship and realizing that maybe it wasn't me that wasn't healthy. Maybe they were unhealthy as well. And so recognizing that I'm seeing the process through that, but it's, it's, it's a two way thing. And so having that working through um, has helped me to start building better friendships and seeing what healthy friendships and those healthy relationships look like. Uh, just being, you know, open with them talking to them spending you know, time um, has mm -hmm. certainly been a great way to pursue a purpose and so seeing the bad relationships and then now seeing what the good ones actually do look like um, i think has been extremely helpful for me um, but certainly if i didn't process that or process that hurt i'd probably still be closed off i, I probably would still be just by myself and not looking to open up to have that potential to get hurt again. Um, so yeah, recognizing that processing it is a big part of uh, getting past that trauma. Um, so, yeah. So. yeah, and I think Pastor Craig too at the end did a great job of just recognizing I'm not okay, you're not okay, we're bumping off of each other. Mm -hmm. And just really owning the last couple of years where all of us have felt out of sorts because of all yeah. of the isolation and restrictions and government chaos of you know what's happening now what's going to happen um changes for work for a lot of people yes um, yeah yeah i think it's that idea too that this has been a really challenging season for relationships because we haven't we've been bumping off of each other and yeah yeah so yeah 
Yeah, it's it's good. So, but yeah, that first step that he talked about about processing that pain or trauma, that is a big part of being able to work through it. Um, and so I, I just I like how he unpacked that and uh, just kind of work through that because that really is the first step that we need to take um, in working on working through it for sure. Um, so yeah, excellent. Certainly excellent. Um, and certainly has helped me understand more about what I need to do moving forward with other traumas that I may face or maybe will come up from um, previous years. Yeah, because you can't stuff them. You can't go over it. You can't go around them. You have to go through it. Nope, that's for sure. And, and stuffing stuff from the past, which um, I have done, uh, it, it just leaves you bitter. It really does. And I, I find that bitterness really never seems to want to go away. It's just, it's always there. It's always like nagging and bugging you. And it's just like, you, you gotta you gotta process it to get rid of the bitterness because it just eats away at you slowly and slowly. And you just, it's not, it's not healthy. It's not healthy to do that. No, no I, I, I'm thinking too about that series, No Offense, that we spent a lot of time talking about um, that Pastor Craig did a while ago. That was really good. And you're right, if yeah. you don't deal with your trauma, you can be so easily offended. Oh, easy, easily offended. And I, again, his series again, yeah, that was a great series, uh, the no offense that really brought to light about what, you know, taking, taking that offense, what's that look like and, you know, <laughs> and why do we do that, right? So I, I yeah, it, it's, it's a great series and I like how he puts them all together like that, that they actually can really build off each other and you can go back and rewatch them, which I, I like, so you can pull a bit more out of them. Um, okay, so we're going to read uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10. But he had said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insult, in hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And what a powerful scripture like paul's talking about there like you know delighting in in pain and weakness and insults and difficulty and you know hardships and again all the things that he went through looking at that that he just delights in that it, it was like wow i don't know if i would be delighted about that i, I think i would be very uh, bitter about all that i don't think i would ever want to be delighted um, but super powerful. So how could God's grace change the way you view your situation? I think it's the reminder that, um, I tend to major on the minors. And, okay. and what I mean by that is that I look at a problem and I think the purpose of this life is to fix the problem. Mm. Yep. And that's really the minor issue. The bigger issue is, do I see God working through this and his grace working in my life and other people's lives to be the real focus of what this life is all about? Um, the fact that it is about grace, that that's going to make life more meaningful. It's not about avoiding hardships. It's not about feeling strong. It's not about seeing where this is all going. It's knowing God is at work. He's going to give me the grace. And it is sufficient. And almost like those things when you're a kid, right, where you, you just have trust and faith that yeah. your parents are, are there or a caring family member is there. Yep. And you just live life very differently. And it's like, God wants me to see him that way, that yep. it doesn't matter if I have the energy. He does. He has the strength. He is my secret power and it's not my circumstances. And I think this season where everything has been, I, you know, I was saying to my counselor, um, 52 pickup and I'm just waiting for the rug to be pulled out from underneath me again. And I have to go pick up all the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to control my life so that I don't have to pick up pieces and God say, no, I've got the bigger picture. Just trust me that you're just take that next little step. And that next little step, stop focusing on all these 
little things that you think are so important. The big thing is my grace. Yeah. And um, I think if we really understand God's grace, that it's not about um, us, it's about him. It really changes the focus. Mm-hmm. It really, really does. And then I think that's why Paul could do that because he saw God working it through. He knew God yeah. was with him in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Major on the minors. That, that's a good one. I like that. I'll have to remember that because that's, yeah, sometimes we get so focused on the little things and make such a big deal about them when we're really not that big of a deal. I, I do like that. I look at the grace part and, and just even the beginning part of that scripture, my grace is sufficient for you. And it's not like it's sufficient. It's it's just like, it's just enough. It's not like it's going to be, you know, I'm just blowing out of the water. It's, it's sufficient. And I like the way that's put because, you know, a lot of the times we would like to be, you know, like Superman, we like to fly over the problems, right? You just like straight over top, just bypass everything. Um, but that's not how that's not how the grace works, right? And it's not like okay, because if that was the way, we never experience anything difficult. Life would be easy. There'd be no challenge. There'd be no. It would change how we, just how we are. And so that's sufficient. You look at like a, a wavy see is the difficulties and traumas and, and that grace is, is sufficient enough to just to keep you on the surface right you're still kind of in it but you're just above it like you're, you're right in that middle point right and so seeing that you know god's grace can really keep us to where we need to be that we're going to go through stuff but he's going to keep us afloat right and and that grace and that movement i think is really what can change how we see things and so a perspective for me, again, it's a shift from we come to that difficulty. We can either take a negative choice or a positive choice. And I know, we, again, earlier in the series, I was talking about that neg- negative mind talk. Um, and so we can look at it as a positive. Okay. You know, Paul's talking about I delight in weakness. Well, he's looking at it as positive. I may be weak in this, but God's going to pull me through. God's going to keep me above that weakness, right? He's going to keep me right there, but he's there with me, helping me through. The insults, the hardships, we're going to go through them. And he's not, in looking at Paul, it's it's not that he's saying I'm above all of these, I'm going through them. And looking at, okay, you know, God's got me, so I'm going to choose, yes, this is going to be difficult, but I've got friends, I've got support, I've got God, I've got my you know, church family, everybody there around me to help me and I've got God. So why should I be, you know, why should I be upset? Why should I be mad? Why should I be, you know, angry um, when I can take a different view, take a positive look of I've got all the support. So this shouldn't be so bad. Um, And I think that's where I think a lot of us can get lost or get hung up on. This is hard. Oh, it sucks. Why is this happening? I shouldn't have this happen. I just had this other thing happen. Like, and I, I think we get stuck in that negativeness and we look at it as a negative, uh, a negative uh, perspective. Um, and we talked about uh, in life this week, a little bit about what, what it looks like about, you know, uh, the hardships, the traumas and you know, where we are. Instead of it being, you know, seasons of stuff, uh, I think it was uh, Rick Warren put it as it's like a train. They're running side by side. They're constantly together. They're always side by side. It's not good and bad, good and bad. It's they're always together. But God's kind of that middle between them where he's coming with you through the hard stuff and the good stuff. We're going to get through together. So I really like that analogy, um, that they're a parallel train and God's in the middle. He's pulling along with us, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I, yeah, there's so much in this message and certainly more than I think we can uh, really unpack. Um, But that's, of course, where life groups come into play and they bring out so much more. I feel in these uh, discussions when you can sit down and talk with three, four really close friends and and dive deep into what this looks like for each of them, because that perspective can shift um, 
for you even from what they're discussing and have a different look on maybe a similar situation you're going through. Um, so certainly get into a life group, you two friends, you guys can do it just like we're doing it tonight, all virtual. You can be anywhere and you can still be a part of a life group. Um, and, you know, of course, we want to encourage you guys to uh, continue to be involved, watching those messages, comment, let us know what uh, what your thoughts are on this message, previous messages, um, because it's it's important to have that uh, community, that connection um, that we, of course, know uh, in the church setting. We have that community. We have that built in. We do life together. And so doing that together really, I, I think, helps build us up and build us together uh, in a much better way. Of course, we are running out of time. I could go on for probably another hour, but <laughs> we are, of course, out of time this this, this day. So uh, we just want to thank, thank the tech team, of course, behind us making all of this this uh, you know mobile uh, talking over work for us this week. Um, and so we just want to thank them for all that they do. Um, I, of course, want to thank you, Carolyn, for joining me this evening uh, on a wonderful talk it over. And uh, we want to remember, whoever finds God. Bye. Bye.